Hi guys and welcome to the 18th lesson in this series and today we'll be looking at standard dialogues. So uh, standard dialogues are basically dialogues that initializes um, in accordance with the values set through its initializer or methods and the final values are basically obtained also through a method call. So it's not obtained directly from the dialog widget. So basically, we use standard um, dialogs for more complex validation. So in contrast to the DOM dialog, where anything that we accept through the dialog itself, that's what is brought back into the program. So DOM dialogs are used for very basic validation where the, the validation can be done through the widgets. But if we have more complex, um, complex validation, then we would need to use a standard dialog. So I'll show you what I mean right now. Uh, let's say, for example, let's look at the program <coughs> that we'll be using for example here. So this program is basically a spreadsheet of numbers um, we have just some random numbers and what we're going to do is use the standard dialog to change the formatting of these numbers here. So for example, we'll be using the first button here in this uh, video. So say for example, um, currently we have this thousand separators separated by a comma, but say we want to have a say a semicolon uh, we can press OK and we see that the thousand separators change to a semicolon we can also have the negative numbers shaded red so if we do that we see that all the negative numbers are shaded in red and let's remove that and let's put something that we haven't accepted as a separator so for example, what if we use the at sign? Then we would get an error. So let's sh I'll show you now how we got to this error and I'll show you the validation process in terms of using a standard dialog. So let's change this back to a comma and let's look at the code. All right, so let's end that there. Okay. So we won't be going too much into the code for the the form itself because mostly we'll be looking at the the dialog, so the standard dialog. But just to run through, we basically created a form. Uh, we have these are the columns, um, the rows and the columns. Uh, um, we have a we start off with a dictionary. So as you can see, when we just start the program, we have a comma as the thousand separator, the period as the decimal marker, two decimal places, and no red shading. All right. Um, we have a, and then we'll have a, um, a dictionary of numbers. Uh, let's see. And we'll basically generate, um, well, these are the buttons. We'll generate some random numbers and assign those to the cells themselves. So um, these are the coding that um, does just that. Again, this is the refresh table. So every time we make a change using a dialog, then it checks if what we're using as the thousand separators. So it goes back to the the dictionary um, it comes back here and it says all right whatever we're using for the thousand separator that's what it would place um, between the 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 thousand and the hundred digit right and it does the same for the the decimal places and then if we have the red negatives as true 
um, it will shade the that cell in red all right so that's basically what that does then this is the method that we call after pressing that button so it basically um, we call for a dialog which is a number format dialog one and we'll look at that in a second and it basically does all all its validation from there so you can see that if it was accepted um, we go to the dialog that's here and we return um, we return whatever values um, through that validation if we get an error then you know that it won't return anything all right or we will just return the values that were that were there already so let's all right, let's look at it so in this case um, this is the class for the number dialog we have we took the format from the form from the calling form and we basically have the these are the labels so this is basically um, just creating the dialogue so we have been through this um, a lot of times so we won't spend a lot of time here all right so this is just creating the dialogue itself so um, as we see here we have two buttons though we have the OK and we have the cancel um, buttons so as you know if we press the OK button then we get an accept si um, signal and if we click the cancel we get a reject so in this case say we click the accept button it basically we create our exceptions here so we have a thousand um, error and a decimal error so and then we have a frozen set with the we have a frozen set with the, the the symbols that we accept so if if the user chooses anything but these then we will basically throw an error all right so what we do we have our try block um, again optional but it's pretty recommended that you use it and we check that the decimal um, is not zero well we check that the the marker that is used so in this case let's run the program again we basically check if this is none it will throw an error and this is the error that it shows as you see it says the decimal marker may not be empty so that's what thrown here so that's what I mean by this should not be empty all right and it also does the same for the others so we check that there's not more than uh, um, one character for the thousands or the decimal um, if the character is or the symbol is not in the frozen set here then it also throws an error uh, then uh, yeah this is the the message box so the the little box that you see pop up with the error is basically a Q message box and this is how we initialize it all right and we do the same thing for the decimal marker error all right and then uh, if everything goes well so there's no error then all we do we change the the thousand separator to whatever we put in the dialog box we change the decimal and whether and we change the decimal places and whether we have a red shaded for the negatives or not and after that <coughs> after that we basically uh hold on we QJ accept okay so we accept the changes here so we send an accept signal and if we go back to our form here it says the number format so we ask back for the number format method which in our case it's this method and all it does is return the format all right so after it returns the format goes back here 
after it returns the format then we simply refresh the table so we set the format so remember we initialize our format here but in this case based on what the user changes then this would be different and then we simply refresh the table as we um, went over this earlier and it simply updates the the cells to whatever values that the dialog um, that the user place in the dialog so as you can see it's um it's different from the dom dialog as in most of the validation is done inside a method so if this was a dom dialog then you would have users being able to sorry you'd have users being able to to put in anything they want in here and especially like how this is a text box uh, most dialogues with text box usually are standard dialogues because um, text box um, what you call it, it's it's basically open to a lot of user errors so um, most programs with a text box would actually be a standard dialogues if for example we were we only had a decimal place here then this could have been a dumb dialogue because you see the decimal places start from zero and goes up to six and you can't go anymore and if we had the reg negative then it can only be true or false but when it comes to having um, text where the user can basically put whatever they want then you would need a standard dialogue all right so <coughs> Um, that's it in basically explaining what a standard dialog is. Um, I'll have this uh, code in the description so you'll be able to um, play around with it and you can go in more and see how this program was created. In the next lesson, we'll be looking at uh, hold on. in the next lesson we'll be looking at smart dialog and we'll basically using the apply and the close method so with the apply method um, we can basically change the values without the dialog actually be changing and in the live dialog which is also a smart dialog um, once we change the values here it automatically changes on the form so we'll be looking at those in the next lesson so i hope you learned um a lot about smart dialogues i mean standard dialogues and again you can go ahead and play around with the code and see how the validation is set up and i'll see you in the next lesson thanks for watching